Uh, hi, my name is uh, John Cannon, the lead developer of Gplates. I'll be going through a roadmap of some new features planned for Gplates and Pi Gplates in the future. So uh, Gplates is plate tectonic software for the desktop with a graphical interface. And Pi Gplates is a Python library that provides fine grain access to this functionality. Uh, so this is, this is more fine grain than is possible through the Gplates interface. This is useful to researchers because it gives them the freedom to use PyGplates functions and classes uh, in a wide variety of different scenarios. So there's more flexibility. Uh, so the current release is Gplates 2.3. I'll go over a little bit of that in a moment. And the current uh, release of PyGplates is uh, revision 28. So just think of that as 0.28. I think we, we started with revisions, but once we get to 1.0, we're just going to do proper revisioning. And we're going to hope to get these releases out every six to 12 months a little more quickly than we currently have been. So here we have uh, Gplates 2.3. One of the new features here is tectonic subsidence. Uh, in 2.2, we had crustal thickness, and so we've just added tectonic subsidence here. So on the left here, you can see some a whole bunch of points uh, in a rift region that is just rifted. Um, and the points, the more orange and reddish points uh, indicate that they've subsided more. Uh, so that initial subsidence there on the left is primarily due to crustal stretching. And then if you look on the right, it's uh, there's even further subsidence. And that is primarily due to the cooling of the lithosphere. So uh, switching to PyG plates for a moment, uh, one of the things that we're going to do for PyG plates 1.0 is uh, make it easy to install. Uh, currently, uh, you have to basically extract a zip file, which is a pre-compiled version of PyG plates on Mac OS or Windows or Linux. And, uh, then you set your Python path. And so what we want to do for 1.0 is use Anaconda. So you can just, once you've got Anaconda installed, you type conda install PyG plates, uh, and you don't have to worry about uh, setting everything up. Um, we probably won't have uh, the regular pip installable packages. Um, basically, PyG plates is, has a lot of C++ dependencies and is itself a C++ Python extensions, so that fits uh, quite well with uh, Anaconda. So uh, one of the main things uh, that we'll support uh, in PyG plates 1.0 will be deformation. Uh, and so we've just finished the, the ability to basically take points, uh, place them inside deforming regions and reconstruct them. Uh, and also create uh, output derived quantities from that deformation like crustal thinning and tectonic subsidence. Uh, so here's a, a small example of how you would do that in PyG plates. Uh, so you basically import PyG plates, you'd create a topological model given the topology file names and rotation file names. So the topology file names would be uh, your deforming networks and your rigid plate polygons. And then you would use that to reconstruct a bunch of points, which I've called initial points here at some initial time and reconstruct them to present day. So that would do all the deforming network reconstructions of those points. And then once you've done that, uh, that accumulates the history of all the point positions through time uh, and their quantities like crustal thinning, tectonic subsidence. And then you can just loop through uh, and query those positions at different times and the scalar values, the uh, like tectonic subsidence. Uh, another thing we want to add is uh, velocities, just better support for velocities, easy to calculate them. Uh, that'll be one of, the, one of the main things to make velocities easy to calculate, uh, including inside deforming regions and on plate boundaries, and, and also expose the velocity export formats you see in G plates. So one of the uh, applications of PyG plates is data mining. So there'll be efforts to integrate and link uh, PyG plates better to, to data mining. One of those aspects is co-registration, which is essentially uh, 
correlating two sets of reconstructed geometries. So you might want to transfer uh, trench values onto a subducting point. And PyG plates supports this at a, at, a, at a low level. It can calculate the distance between geometries and find out which geometries are within a certain region of interest of another geometry. And so the idea is to just uh, make that a little easier to use um, for, for data mining as a front end for data mining applications. Uh, returning to G plates, uh, one of the big things we want to implement is generalized symbology. So this is uh, different types of point symbols for point geometries, uh, line patterns, and field patterns inside polygons. Uh, one of the big missing features that we want is uh, subduction teeth along subducting lines uh, to indicate the direction of the overriding plate. Um, so that's the first phase of symbology, and that will be in G plates, the next release of G plates. And the second phase will, will basically be how to map uh, how to determine what symbols to use for different features and geometries. Uh, so this is basically having been able to specify rules that determine what, uh, how to color it, how, what symbols to apply based on the feature properties uh, and be able to change the symbols through time. One of the things we want to do is extend our current 3D volumes to, to make them time dependent so that uh, it changes through time. And also we want to, we're doing an uh, our graphics engine overhaul we have to fix a current issue with on Mac OS uh, it's having some issues on some hardware rendering 3D volumes. Also, we want to have a tool that enables you to query uh, the raster value under a cursor or at, a, at a point uh, and also be able to show a plot of a 2D plot of that value over time, which would require uh, implementing 2D charts uh, in the G-Plates viewport. Some of the things we're, we're currently working on and will be in the next release uh, involve the G-Plates camera. So the ability to tilt the camera so that you can see the, the globe side on. Uh, this is good to uh, 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 see the interior of 3D volumes. And a, a new uh, 3D uh, viewing mode, uh, it's called 3D Perspective. It's, it's similar to the 3D orthographic except that it's just more how your eye would see the situation. Uh, further objects appearing smaller. So there's a few things that, that need to be uh, re-implemented a little bit, and that is uh, like rasters and things like that uh, due to this change of view. But So that should be in the next release. Currently, we can uh, reconstruct rasters using uh, rigid plates. Uh, so one of the things we'll, improvements we'll make is to enable rasters to be deformed through deforming networks as well. And since we use uh, graphics hardware to for this all to remain interactive, then we just have, need to make sure that deformed rasters uh, also remain interactive. We'll also have a, uh, a native G-Plates raster format. So uh, basically you'll import your NetCDF or JPEG uh, using the import procedure in G-Plates and then that will create a a GPR raster file, which you use from then on. And also the ability to combine two numerical rasters uh, using math operations. So an example there would be applying um, an equation to present day depth to undo seafloor subsidence back in time. So GPLATES has uh, its internal information model, which basically dictates the geological features and what properties they can have. And uh, the, what we're gonna do is, is uh, make this a little lighter um, and just reduce it to a, a core model that's, uh, that G-Plates needs to be able to do reconstructions, support topologies, calculate velocities, and, and, and basically just core types that uh, like mid-ocean ridges and trenches. And then leave, leave the rest of the feature properties uh, to be classified by the by the community, so like rock types, fossil collection, and basically give more freedom to to users to determine what type of data they want to load and how they want to specify it. Also, we want to uh, overhaul our all our non-native file format uh, input output. Currently, we've got the 
the GPML files, which is the native format, and then you've got the non-native formats like shape files. And, and there's new form, more advanced formats like Geo package and KML. And so we just need to uh, provide better support for those. And at the same time, uh, integrate them a little better with the GPGIM, the uh, GPlates information model. And uh, a PyGPlates concurrently, the, the GPlates Python library can currently um, fix crossover rota rotation crossovers where the, uh, the, the fixed plate changes. Uh, and what we need to do is just integrate this better into, into GPlates as well. And also there's the, uh, the option of displaying um, the rotation hierarchy uh, visually on the plates on the globe. Being able to uh, select and, and edit multiple features at the same time is, is a, another thing that might would be useful. Currently, you can only select one feature and edit at a time. And a, and a filter layer where you can basically filter out features that, um, based on rules on their feature properties and uh, also spatial queries, like which, which features geometries are within a, uh, a polygon or a, or a bounding rectangle. And once the um, Pi, there's been some changes to the model in Pi G plates, uh, and once those are integrated back into G plates, then we can have better support for undo redo. In the in the long term, one of the things uh, we will provide is a Python plugin infrastructure. This enable uh, users to basically uh, configure various aspects of G plates uh, using Python. So a good example of that is if there's a file format you want to load that GPlates doesn't support, then you can write a Python plugin that tell, that basically knows how to parse that new input format and it can load the feature uh, into, into GPlates. So along with uh, GPlates and PyGPlates, there's also the GPlates web portal. Uh, and so we'll continue to um, add 3D visualizations of new research workflows and continue to uh, enhance the uh, web service where you can basically uh, do web requests to do reconstructions rather than perhaps doing it within the GPlates application or with PyGPlates. So thank you for listening and you can uh, visit the GPlates website to find out more about GPlates, PyGPlates and the GPlates web portal.